Let's also move to currencies now. The US dollar index climbed for a fifth straight session on the solid labor market data. And this is the US Senate approved a stopgap bill to avert a partial government shutdown. But what is this going to mean for the Aussie and the Euro? Also the Japanese yen pairing ahead of the central bank meetings to talk us through it all. Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets joins me now. Good to see you, Lachlan. I mean, let's just start, Hi, I guess, Jill. with what the strength that we've seen in, in the US dollar and this really on the back of the fact that these expectations of rate cuts as early as March are being pared back significantly. Uh, certainly. I, th- I think the dollar index um, strength mainly on the on euro weakness as well being a big weight of that. But um, the market, I think, will continue to to pare back on these, these cuts in March. I think it's still around about 55% priced in. But... Um, you know, recent data comments from the Fed, it's, it's, it's hard to see them actually going through with a cut in March. So I expect those odds to uh, keep getting lower and lower as we come up to that meeting. And that will, that will support the US dollar, um, certainly against something like the euro, where their central bank is, um, rather than pushing back on rate cuts, seems to be encouraging them with some of their comments um, out of Lagarde, et cetera that uh, we could see cuts in in, uh, in the summer. So their central bank meeting next week will be an interesting one to watch as well. Indeed. Well, let's talk about then more movement with the euro, particularly as we did hear from ECB policymakers that uh, they appeared confident inflation is heading towards target, but still see these risks, as you mentioned, that really warrant a more steady as she goes mantra. Yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I thought they might be pushing back against um, the market expectations, which are quite dovish of, of the ECP, probably a little bit too dovish. But then, you know, they don't really need to. The, this, this dovish expectation from the market about rate cuts is almost doing their job of the rate cuts for them. So I think they're meeting next Thursday. They, um, they won't push back too hard against uh, the market expectations. Um, little will be changed. I, I expect the euro to be a, a bit of a laggard, to be honest. I think uh, other central banks probably will push back a bit more uh, the Fed and, and the RBA as well. But um, the Euro seem, the Euro ECB seems pretty happy in, in the market, being a little bit on the dovish side, uh, doing a bit of their job for them, I guess. When we look at the UK inflation print, which uh, just recently came out as well, the forecasts now are that we won't see cuts from the BOA until around August. Is that sort of what you're looking at too? Oh, at a minimum, I think um, that reading, and I think we'll get a, a few more surprises along those lines too. I, I, the, the rates markets for all these um, economies seem to be overly optimistic, uh, whether it's uh, the UK, Europe, US, Australia. I think um, the rate cuts won't come as fast and, and as furious as what the market is pricing in. And, and that, that kind of um, repricing as the year goes on, uh, I think we'll see a bit of choppiness uh, in the currency market as these uh, bigger currencies battle it out, whose central bank can push back the most. But um, the pound is looking pretty good at the moment, I've got to say, especially against the euro, which uh, is it's hit 2024 lows, the euro pound pair. So that'd be one to watch. It's approaching a, a pretty big support level down there around 85. What about the Aussie dollar? It seems that we were tracking to that 66, 67, and now we seem to be seeing a bit of a resistance there. Uh, the Aussie, well, the Aussie dollar, the reaction yesterday, I mean, the headline figure of the employment report was an absolute shocker. And you saw the uh, the algos jump in and, and sell the Aussie dollar uh, like the clappers. But uh, it did bounce back very strongly. It, it found some really good support at those December lows at 65.25 against the US. Um, and I guess the, the positive risk sentiment also helped that. But um, on the surface, that, that figure wasn't very good. But taken with you know, the, the month before, the bumper figure we had, and I guess over Q4 as well, we've seen over 50,000 jobs. So that one-off figure didn't really um, convince FX traders, all rates traders for that matter, to, that the RBA is, is going to move the needle on the RBA. So um, if it can hold this support around 65, 25, 65, we could see it push back up slowly, but it may be hard going while there's a bit of repricing in the Fed expectations. But um, I'm pretty bullish on the Aussie dollar from say, Q2 onwards once that Fed cut is, is fully um, priced out in March. And, and you could see it go up and test that 68 again, I'm thinking, in the next couple of months. So you touched there on the jobs report, which, of course, moved uh, in the Aussie quite a bit. When we look towards the next print for the RBA, it's really going to be this quarterly inflation print at the end of the month. I know hard to predict, but uh, to your earlier point, does it seem that any sort of likelihood of RBA cuts um, anytime soon is, is very, very premature? 
Oh, I think so. I think, um, I mean, we had a, a, a cool and expected CPI a few weeks ago. We've had this lower um, employment figure. But looking at the other CPI, it's coming down very slowly. If you, if you kind of annualise that out, well, we're still looking at over around 4% for 2024, which is well above what the RBA's uh, target range is. And another thing there as well is that we're not really in restrictive territory with rates here. We've got, if you look at the cash rate minus inflation, we're pretty much at zero, which is not restricted by any means when you look at the US they've got about 200 basis points uh, on top so it's likely I think the RBA will hold pat they've always been a very conservative bank normally so I think that will lend um, some strength to the, uh, to the Aussie dollar as well as the year goes on that becomes clear that they're in no rush uh, to, to cut anytime soon but that CPI figure you did mention on the Jan 31st that'll be a definitely big one to watch. And just a quick word as well on what we're seeing with some of the EM moves. I mean, China very much in focus with its uh, GDP print and the the forecasts that it will still achieve this very aggressive growth for 2024. Is there anything you're looking out for in the EM space? Um, Chinese yuan is a funny one. I haven't been paying too much attention to the EM space today, unfortunately, but um, I know it's the Chinese figures haven't been overly um, impressive. They've just hit kind of some very conservative targets. But uh, going forward, it will depend on how their economy performs. I mean, if there's any stimulus coming with their property sector in a bit of trouble. But um, I, yeah, that, that's a that's one I haven't looked at today.